In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the cosine law. Uh, in previous lessons, we looked at something called the sine law, and this is the cosine law. Uh, first of all, the what the law actually is. It states if triangle ABC has angles A, B, and C, and sides A, B, and C, which are opposite the corresponding angles, then this is the cosine law. Uh, but first of all, the important thing is that the angles are labeled with capital letters, and their opposite relative sides are... Uh, labeled with the lowercase equivalent letter. So angle A and A are opposite. Angle B and side lowercase b are opposite from each other. And angle C and side lowercase c are opposite from each other. And the cosine law says, in that case, A squared is equivalent to B squared plus C squared minus the product of 2 times B times C times the cosine of A. Um, now, what in what cases can we use the cosine law is the next part. In order to use the cosine law to solve, you must be given either of these two things, either all of the side lengths of the triangle or two side lengths and what's called the contained angle. And the contained angle is the angle between those two side lengths. So for example, if I was given uh, side C and side B, the contained angle is not angle B. That's not between those two sides. Uh, angle B is between side A and side C. The angle that's between, or the contained angle between those two, is angle A. So if I'm giving those two sides and the contained angle A, uh, I could use the cosine law. The cosine law is used to calculate two things. Uh, in some cases, it's used to calculate a side length. In other cases, it's used to calculate an angle measure. Uh, so what we're going to do is look at both cases. First of all, solving for a side length. This question says, determine the measure of the length of AB to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. And in this case, what we're given is two side lengths and the contained angle, which means we can use the cosine law. It wants us to solve or determine the measure of AB, and I'm just going to label the length of AB with X. Um, <clears throat> the, one of the important things to realize is although this... Uh, triangle is labeled with A, B, and C, and the formula is labeled with A, B, C, the variables may not be in the same order, per se. The important thing about using the cosine law is that either the side length that you're solving for or the angle you're solving for, and its opposite, always replace the uppercase A in the case of the angle and the lowercase A in the case of solving for a side length. So those opposites, if one of them we're solving for, it it and its opposite replace the A's. Uh, where the other two sides go, it doesn't really matter. I can replace the 6 with B or C. And same with 6.5. I'm going to replace uh, B with 6 and C with 6.5. So let me get started here. It states that X squared is equivalent to 6 squared plus 6.5 squared minus the product of 2 times 6 times 6.5 times the cosine of 40. Uh, let's go ahead and find out all of these products. I would suggest leaving the minus and plus signs out of the products. Uh, otherwise, with the minus signs, some people will get confused. 6 squared is 36. 6.5 squared is 42.25. And the product of 2 times 6 times 6.5 times the cosine of 40 is equivalent to roughly 59.75. Uh, next step is to get this sum and difference. So this is 36 plus 42.25 subtract 59.75 and we have 18.5. Um, it's always useful to see if that's a reasonable answer. 18.5 makes no sense right now because these two, uh, since this is done to scale, uh, are each 6.5 and 6. The issue here is that this is what x squared is equal to. So the last step is that we need to actually take the square root. So x is equivalent to the square root of 18.5 that solution is roughly 4.3. So that length is roughly 4.3 centimeters, and we're done. Uh, the other case of solving for the cosine law is solving for an angle measure. In this case, it says for triangle CAT, determine angle T. If side C is 3, side A is 5 centimeters, and side T is 4.5. Uh, in this case, I'm going to draw it somewhat to scale. So if I put angle C, A, and T here, side C, which is opposite angle C, is 3.0 centimeters. Side A, which is opposite angle A, is 5.0 centimeters. And side T is 4.5 centimeters. Now, as I mentioned, here's the important thing. Although this does have an angle A and a side A, they will not, in this case, replace the capital A and lowercase a in the formula. Um, 
because what we're solving for is angle T. And as I mentioned, any angle that we're solving for and its opposite side are placed and replace the capital A and the lowercase a in the cosine formula. Uh, so that is really important. Uh, the other two sides, doesn't matter where they go. I could put 5.0 to replace B and 3.0 <clears throat> to replace C. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, we have 4.5 squared is equivalent to 5 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 5 times 3 times the cosine of T. <clears throat> uh, what most people typically do wrong, uh, I'll get to in one second, but the first thing I want to do is figure out all these products. <clears throat> so 4.5 squared is 20.25. So this is 20.25 is equivalent to 25 plus 9, and 2 times 5 times 3 is 30 uh, times the cosine of t. Uh, because of this product, 30 times cosine t, you are not allowed to, and this is a very typical mistake, you are not allowed to say that this is 4 cos t, even though 25 plus 9 minus 30 is 4. They aren't like terms because of this product. So just be careful of that. The next step is actually to start isolating uh, the cos t. So the first thing you want to do is isolate this term here. Which means, in other words, what we have to do is subtract 25 and subtract 9 from both sides. If we do that, what we're going to get on the left-hand side, 20.25 uh, minus 25 minus 9 is equivalent to negative 13.75. So we have negative 13.75 is equivalent to negative 30 times the cosine of t. Now, we don't add 30. This negative 30 is a coefficient. It's being multiplied. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 30 is divide by negative 30. Again, our goal is to isolate t. So in this case, we have uh, cosine of t, which is on the right side. I'm just placing it on the left side, is equivalent to uh, this ratio here. And let me just make that a decimal number. Since they're both negative, that will be a positive ratio, 13.75 divided by 30. That's roughly 0.5. 458333 uh, 0.458333 continue. Don't round that value, uh, otherwise the angle will be slightly wrong. Uh, your final thing to do is, since this is what cos t is equal to, so the, the uh, ratio of cos t, to solve what we're going to do is take the cos inverse. So we're going to take the cos inverse of 0 0.4583 continued. Let me do that on my calculator. So the cos inverse of that answer, and I get roughly 63 degrees. So in this case, t is equivalent to roughly 63 degrees. That's how we solve and use the cosine law to solve for side length and for an angle. Uh, finally, just some important things, and I mentioned this a couple times. When you are using the cosine law, the angle or side you are solving for and its opposite side or angle must replace the capital A in the angles case and the lowercase a in the sides case in the formula. So um, that's about it.